What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling refreshed from the new year and ready to dive into some more Shopify theme development in 2021 and beyond. Today, I've got a video I've been planning for quite a while, actually. We're gonna be talking about troubleshooting when it comes to Shopify theme development. So if you're finding yourself getting stuck while developing Shopify themes and needing clarity around what's gone wrong, then definitely stick around. I'm gonna show you some hacks and strategies that will help you a lot when it comes to finding and fixing errors in your code. So let's get started straight away. So in today's video, we're gonna look at strategies and tools to use in order to troubleshoot when writing Shopify liquid code, JSON schemas, SCSS, and JavaScript. Let's start with Shopify liquid. All right, so in this video, just like a lot of my coding tutorials here on this channel involving Shopify theme development, I'm going to be doing this from the environment of my developer store, Chris Testing Shop. So if you've done my tutorials before, you should be well familiar with what this store is and how I created it. If not, you can create your own development stores by just going to partners.shopify.com and signing up. It will allow you to create as many development stores as you want, and then you can use that as an environment for doing Shopify theme development. The other thing I've done here is I've duplicated the standard debut theme, which comes for free on new Shopify store installs, and I've just added a page template. Before I show you any further, I'm just gonna increase the size of everything, zoom in nice and tight so that you guys can see everything clearly. Sorry if everything's a bit too big on the screen, but this will save me from having to zoom in. All right, so what I have done is I've gone into the code, I've created an alternate page template. So as you can see here, I've got page.testing.liquid. How I did that was I just went into here, select page, put in testing, hit create template. And then after you do that, you go into pages, add a new page, I've already got mine here. And then you just change the template suffix to page.testing or whatever yours is called. Just note that the page template or the alternative template, whether it's page or product or collection, needs to be on the live theme. So just make sure you create it on the live theme if you wanna select it in your admin. All right, so this is the page we're gonna be working off. I'm gonna hit view page. And you can see here, we've got the title and the page content, which is currently blank. So this is coming through as blank. And then I'm gonna go back to my themes here and let's dig into the code by going to actions, edit code. As you can see, page.testing.liquid is already open. So I'm all good. I'm gonna click this icon to hide all the other stuff, give us a bit more screen real estate. And I'm gonna to demonstrate to you guys now what I see as the biggest issue when doing Shopify liquid coding, or what is the biggest hang up, I would say, while doing Shopify theme development with Shopify liquid. To put it as simply as possible, it's a matter of trying to access attributes on an object and it not coming through and then wondering why that is the case. My advice in this instance is to go back to the object level. But this will make a lot more sense once I demonstrate it. So I'm gonna remove this tag right here and let's put in some custom code. I'm going to try and create a product object or a reference to the product object by using the all products global here. This global allows us to select any product from our store via its handle. But what I'm gonna do is put in a handle for a product that doesn't exist. So right now I'm trying to access a product that does not exist, all right? Then what I'm gonna do is access some attributes on this product object that actually doesn't exist, all right? So let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to create a H1 and try and access the title of this product. Then I'm going to create a div and I'm going to try and access the price of this selected product. Price, and I'm gonna format it with the money filter. That's just gonna make it show up uh, in human readable format, not in uh, sense. And I'm gonna hit save. And now let's head over to our page. And what do you expect we will see? Let's refresh and find out, nothing. Well, actually something has changed. So there is a H1 and a div tag. 
Um, we just got to open up our developer tools to see it. So on Mac, I use option command I. Not sure what it is on a Windows, but you can access it via view, developer tools or developer and then developer tools. Uh, this is for Google Chrome, which I recommend for developer tools. I'm going to right click around this area and click inspect. And that's going to get me in the vicinity of this div, which I can now see if I zoom in even further, a H1 and a div. But of course, both of these elements are empty because these values are showing up as blank. Now, this is the issue with Shopify Liquid. When we created this reference to an object that doesn't exist and hit save, no error came up. And then when we get to actually working with it on the front end, it just shows up blank. So my recommendation here is when something like this happens, you go back to the object level and see what's happening with the object. Perhaps you have what's called an empty drop. So I'm gonna demonstrate an empty drop right now. What we're gonna do is output the object with no attribute. So just selected product by itself. All right, gonna hit save on that and let's have a look at what happens on our front end. Here you can see the words empty drop. Now I don't know why Shopify Liquid used the word drop, but you can think of drop as object. So just read this as empty object. Now that we can see that this is an empty object, we can understand why the attributes are coming up blank because there are no attributes on an empty object. So if we go back here, we could do dot title, we could do dot price, we could make dot, you know, dot X, Y, Z, one, two, three, and it wouldn't show up in error. It would just show up blank. And that is a bit of an issue with Shopify liquid, but that's why we need to go back to the object level and have a look at what the object actually is. If we're trying to access a product object, what we should see here instead is product drop. So I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to actually target a product that I know exists in my store. And to be clear to you guys, this is store data. So you actually need to have a product in your store with the handle of this for it to work. All right. So just briefly, if I click on this and go to my products, I'll just prove to you that that product exists in my store. Right here, awesome sneakers. If you ever wanna see the handle of a product, you can just go to its page in the admin, scroll down, hit edit website SEO, and this part here, the editable part of your URL is your handle. So that's confirming that I do have a product in my store with that particular handle, okay? So for those of you who get tripped up, you put in awesome dash sneakers dash one and nothing shows up. Remember, this has to be related to a product you have in your store. And it doesn't have to be a real product. This is all fake products. It's just for testing. So you need to seed your store with some data if you wanna do these kinds of things, which isn't too hard, but that is an important step as well. Okay, so now we know we are targeting the handle of a product that does exist. What do you think will happen now? Let's go back to the front end, refresh and see what happens. Now you can see the title and the price is showing up again, but above it, instead of empty drop, you've got product drop. So now we know when we output the product to our template verbatim, we have a product object. Now, if we were targeting a collection or a blog post or anything like that, it would show up with collection drop or page drop or whatever the object is followed by drop, okay? And that will indicate to us what kind of object we have. But the important thing to note here is if we get this wrong and we target or try to access a product that doesn't exist, there won't be any errors. It'll just show up with empty drop. And so that's why it's important when troubleshooting, if you're trying to figure out why content isn't showing up on the page, go back to the object level, make sure it exists and make sure the object coming back is the object that you are trying to access. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about JSON schemas. So in this section, we're gonna talk about how to debug JSON schemas. This should be a really short part of the video because there's actually a tool that we can use to debug JSON schemas really easily. But first of all, let's actually put an error in one of our JSON schemas and see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is go into a section, any section here, 
all of our sections should have a schema in there. So maybe let's go product template dot liquid. As you can see, when you scroll down to the bottom of the page, we've got some code within a opening and closing schema tag. And this is our JSON schema. So it's all in JSON format. Now the problem with Shopify theme development environment when you're using theme kit or uh, using the cloud based editor like I am now, if we make the slightest error, right? And we've got how many lines of JSON have we got here? Like hundreds of lines of JSON right here. If you make the slightest bit of error anywhere here, it'll just come up with an error and you won't know where that error is. All right, so let's just do something really common, which is to delete a comma. All right, I'm gonna hit save and we'll get back an error. The error will be error invalid JSON in tag schema. So there is an error message, but it's not very descriptive, is it? We just have an error that we know there is some invalid JSON in our schema but we don't actually know where that error is. It could be in any of the hundreds of lines of our giant schema. So there's an easy hack for this. We just need to take the whole schema and put it into another tool that can tell us where the error is. And the tool I like to use for that is JSONLint. So we can just go to jsonlint.com. It's that easy. And then we just throw in the JSON object here hit validate and now you can see there is an error on line 44 and the error message here is a little bit complicated to understand but at least it tells us exactly what line it is so here you can see on this line and if you understand how to write JSON objects you should be able to pick up pretty soon that ah oh, we're missing a comma you're gonna hit validate JSON again and it's valid JSON so then it's just a simple matter of selecting all of it. I do that by clicking into the box, pressing command A, then command C, and let's paste in that result. If I hit save on that, you'll see assets saved with no errors. So that right there is a really handy tool to have. I wouldn't recommend going through with a fine tooth comb, hundreds and hundreds of line of JSON uh, to find an error that you don't know where you went wrong. Just grab the whole object, put it into JSON lint, let Jason Lint or another tool tell you the exact line, then look at the line, figure out where you went wrong, fix it, hit validate Jason again, make sure it's all valid, and then put it back in your template. So how good is that? Very simple. And now we can move on to SCSS. All right, so in this part of the video, we're gonna talk about how we can actually find errors in our SCSS. This is gonna be another short part of the video, I reckon, because there is a simple hack in order to find errors within our SCSS file. It's just not immediately obvious when doing Shopify theme development from either the online editor here or using theme kit on your local computer. So what we're gonna do, of course, we're gonna create an error in our theme.scss.liquid file. And let's go into that right now and as you can see, this is a very, very big file. So if I was to make an error on line 4001, how am I gonna figure out where that error is? Well, let's first just create an error. So I'm going to get rid of this curly bracket here and hit save. After a while, the file will save and it just says asset saved. The code editor doesn't actually acknowledge that I created an error there and it's just allowed us to save. So what I'm gonna do is go back to that page I had before, I accidentally closed it. We can close down this JSON lint now. And let's go to pages. Actually, we don't even need to go to pages troubleshooting. You can see it right here that our style sheet has completely broken. So as you can see, the icons are giant. There is no formatting, no colors. It's just a giant mess. Now, if you've played around with SCSS long enough in Shopify theme development, you've probably come across this a few different times. The problem with SCSS is once you create the tiniest bit of error, the whole thing breaks. And it can be very frustrating, especially when you don't know where the error lies. Well, I'm gonna show you how to actually find that error. So again, we're gonna have to go into our developer tools. I'm gonna to use option command I, remember, 
view developer, developer tools. And what I'm gonna do is look for the reference to that file. So theme.scss um, and not the dot liquid part cause that will be rendered already. All right, so here you can see I've got the theme.scss file. And if I open that in a new tab, you'll see here, if I zoom in, that we have the error message. So here we go, syntax error, invalid CSS after this, expected this, but didn't get it. So that's a very nice descriptive error message. Uh, we get the specific line in the file that the error occurred in. So I can just go back to my code editor, look at, what was it, 8704. So going back to here, 8704 is down here. So it's gonna be slightly off and we can also look up this selectors form. All right, so maybe we look up that instead of the line number because the compile file can be a little bit different. All right, so we've got selectors form here. This gives us an area of the code to look for an error and ah, I can clearly see we're missing a curly bracket right after there. So if I put that back in, I hit save, it's saved. I can refresh over here. Actually, that's cached, so I can't refresh on that. But let's refresh over here and now everything's working. If I wanna go back to that theme SCSS file, I can right click, open in the new tab again, and we can see that the compiled CSS is right there, okay? So all of that code right there, there's no error. And as you can see, everything is showing up. So that's the hack guys. If you need to find an SCSS error, it'll show up in your final CSS file, but you need to go looking for it. So when you do create a breakage and you don't know what the error is, just look for theme.scss in your inspector, find that file, open it up in a new tab, and it should tell you what the error is. And that you can fix straight away and get back to developing your SCSS. All right, so in the next video or in the next part of the video, we're going to look at JavaScript to finish off and that should be it. So I'll see you in just a sec. In this last part of the video, let's talk about how to debug JavaScript. Now this is gonna be the same or largely the same for any platform, whether you're developing on Shopify or not, if you're using front-end JavaScript, the way to debug it is gonna be similar. So there's no real hacks here regarding the Shopify platform, but just to show you as an example, if I go into my theme.js file and throw in an error, let's go to the bottom of this file. So we'll do document ready. So this is just a um, jQuery function that will listen for the document being ready and then execute some code. Let's say that we want to alert with a particular variable that doesn't exist. So fake variable, all right? So let's hit save on that and let me preview our front end right here. I'm going to option command I to head over to our console and you can see here we've got uncaught reference error, fake variable is not defined. Surprise, surprise, okay? So sometimes when you're debugging JavaScript, it's often the case that you won't see an error anywhere on your front end, but then you have to go into your developer tools, head over to console. This is your JavaScript console. This is gonna show you where your errors are and you can get a nice little error message. So as you can see here, fake variable is not defined. So that informs our decision to go in here. And if I created a variable called real variable, and let's make it a string that says, hello. All right, and let's change this to real variable. Then the code should execute and there should be no errors. All right, so let's go back to here, refresh the page. You'll see we get an alert saying hello and no errors in our console. Okay, so that's how we would debug JavaScript. We use the JavaScript console right here. All right, so there you have it. Four ways to troubleshoot in Shopify theme development. If this video has helped you, I encourage you to leave a comment below and let me know what are your biggest takeaways from this video. Remember, I've got longer form content on my Skillshare.com channel. I'll make sure to link that in the description as always for you guys to check out. Um, questions, queries, concerns, feel free to post in the comments. Uh, I thank you as always for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Happy coding.